We are on uh, the shores of Lake Diefenbaker at the uh, bottom part of the reservoir, right by the Gardner Dam. We've been conducting our research on the reservoir since 2011. We're looking at the nutrients that are coming in from the South Saskatchewan River from Alberta. We want to know if these nutrients are being retained in the system, and when I say nutrients, I mean nitrogen and phosphorus, or if these nutrients are being washed out. We're also looking at how uh, different types of climate patterns are influencing the water quality in the reservoir. People call Lake Diefenbaker the prairie jewel, and it's becoming much more of a jewel with time. This is the best water quality we have in southern Saskatchewan. 60% of the residents of the province indirectly rely on this for drinking water. Officially, the reservoir is about 250 kilometers long. We're at the very end of it right now. This is the deepest location in the reservoir. We have about uh, anywhere between uh, 40 and 60 meters of uh, water column here to sample. It's a section that stratifies thermally from top to bottom strongly every summer, which means it's a candidate for losing uh, oxygen in the lower waters if we have a prolonged summer. If we lose a lot of oxygen in the lower waters, we get into water quality issues. The Global Institute of Water Security has a variety of themes. The research on Lake Diefenbaker fits into two themes, the effect of climate and the effect of land management on the reservoir. Both of these themes over time influence water quality. What we're seeing with uh, a changing climate across the globe is more frequent extreme events like the extreme flows that we are witnessing in this reservoir. Those extreme flows often are followed by high nutrient inputs and algal blooms and poor water quality. We need a better understanding of how these connections fit together and then we'll be able to take this information and apply it to other semi-arid regions where there's other large reservoirs around the world. We've divided the reservoir up into a variety of sites and at each site, once a month, we sample a host of water quality parameters. This is uh, called a Secchi disc and uh, what we use this for is to determine the transparency of the water and we do that by lowering this into the water to the point where we cannot see it underwater. If uh, the Secchi disc depth is half a meter before it disappears, that indicates relatively poor water quality. This is a Van Dorn water sampler. You lower it to the you know, depth you want to collect water at. So what you're going to be testing for with the water is nutrient concentrations, uh, chlorophyll concentrations for algal blooms. If you're also interested in the biota, oh, yes. you'd use this to collect uh, not only your phytoplankton, but you want to collect bacteria at a certain depth, uh, zooplankton. The nutrients will change depending on what depth you're at. So this thing is a water quality sonde. We have a, a, a probe on here that detects the amount of algae in the water. Um, we have one that detects the amount of blue-green algae in the water. There's one that'll detect the oxygen concentration in the water. One that detects turbidity, and salinity, and there's a temperature one and a depth probe as well. We put this in the water and lower it all the way to the bottom so you get a good idea of you know, the water quality all the way from top to bottom. There's a host of uh, master students, doctoral students, and there's also postdoctoral uh, fellows involved in the project. I worked on Lake Diefenbaker um, using satellite imagery to detect chlorophyll A concentrations and uh, get an assessment of water clarity in the surface water of Lake Diefenbaker. This research is important because it not only provides a panoptic view of the entire lake, but it also gives us an understanding of where to do projected sampling and where to uh, further investigate the uh, reservoir. If we let a system be inundated with nutrients to the point where the water quality is so poor that it can't be used for irrigation, drinking water, and so forth, 
then we've lost a major resource. And to bring that resource back to us would be extremely expensive. It's always cheaper to prevent than it is to try to restore.